Whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. Reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom! What is going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. And I'm Robin. I'm creeping it real. Hey, and this is episode 99. We're almost breaking that 100 mark. It's, dude, it's, uh, it's pretty insane. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm hyped about it. I'm, I'm pretty hyped. Honestly, if you had told me, uh, you know, what, two years ago when we started this thing that, uh, you know, We'd be hitting 100 episodes and we'd be setting up with mics and doing everything all official and stuff. I'd have been like, oh, really? <laughs> like, I don't know what my expectations were, but I, I I, just find that it keeps getting better and better. And I'm hyped about that. Heck yeah, absolutely. And it, yeah, it's been it's been a couple of years and, and man, it's just great that we're still going strong. Uh, so massive thank you to everybody that's been listening to the episodes either live here on youtube or checking out uh the audio only versions or even coming back to watch uh the videos on youtube um it's it's crazy um we've surpassed a hundred thousand downloads worldwide boom which is pretty insane to think about um awesome. yeah so and and thank you to everybody that for the past few episodes threw some super chats down for the new laptop fund. Jeremy's the got the new laptop rolling. <laughs> the new laptop is secured. I'm using it to record. I'm in Massachusetts playing a few shows in New England this week. And I brought it with me. And uh, Rob, it's cold up here. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not about that life. So uh, <laughs> better you than me. And uh, I, I saw an anole yesterday, so I'm still herping. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Too good. Well, this episode is super, super special. I think you and Long I are long awaited. Yeah. You I, and I are both really geeked about this one. I am so hyped and I cannot say enough amazing things about this uh, guy that we're going to have on here. He is literally uh, the greatest Borneo short tail breeder in the world, bar none, and has really pushed Borneos in this like incredible direction that uh, not since, you know, Keith was doing things that has really been done. And not only that, he's just like an amazing person. And I've known him since I was probably what, 17 or 18 years old. And I do not know anyone who has anything negative to say about our guest tonight. And that would be Matt Minatola of Philly Herpeticulture. Let's get them on here. Herb. Oh, what's, what's up, up dude? How you yeah. doing, man? Thanks for the kind words and uh, congrats on all the shows and uh, all the accolades you guys are just rolling off. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you for coming to hang and chat with yes. us, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's well overdue. I mean, you guys asked me a while ago. I just had some stuff going on. So uh, glad to be able to do it with you guys right now. 99 is yeah, perfect, too. I'm definitely not the 100 number 100 guests 99, <laughs> 99 fits me well i like 99 <laughs> oh man that's that's perfect um okay so matt let's just jump right into this for anybody who doesn't know you um just give us the synopsis what got you into reptiles and and what got you focusing on borneos uh getting into reptiles uh, just as a kid just like i mean it's kind of like everyone else's story uh my dad liked fish. I went to pet stores with him because he was in pet stores back in the day in Philadelphia. Free library was a big deal. My mom would take me. No other books interested you when you're a kid. You're just looking at pictures. Picture, <laughs> snake, basically reptile True. books, snake, snake books. The first, I would take out this book with a green tree python on the cover and a red tail bow on the cover. And then inside, there were cobras in both. I was like obsessed with those three species of snakes. Just as a kid, you know, knowing nothing about it. Just like, oh my God, they're great. So... From there on, I got started with newts, frogs. My dad let me have because they could go in like tanks. Mm -hmm. Got her, got ter regular sliders. I could catch my own snakes and keep them. I would catch DKs and keep them. I was able to actually feed them. Garters, I had no luck with. <laughs> no <laughs> luck with catching garters. No luck as a kid because you DKs you feed worms. They would eat. They would live in the yeah. dirt. It was pretty simple. As I got older, 
uh, almost like at yeah, 10, 11, I got a ball python. I got a boa constrictor. I got a savannah monitor. I got a Nile monitor. I got a, I forget what species of agama, but I love that thing because I wanted the bearded dragon. But the agama mm-hmm. was 15 bucks. The bearded dragon was 300 bucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, and then from there on out, like uh, as I got a little bit older, got rid of my reptiles when I was about 13, 14, but kind of always was interested, not like a big thing. And, and I was able to get a house when I was 18. So when I was 17, the first thing I thought when I get my house, I want to get snakes. And I actually started looking into them because where I was living at the time, I was not going to be allowed to have snakes. So right away, I thought ball python because it was an easy snake. And I thought, well, I have no restrictions right now. So why am I just focusing on getting a ball, like more than, uh, or just a ball python? Hit the web, came across Pro Exotics first to see blood Ooh, pythons. Mm-hmm. And then clicked on Borneos. And inst- I mean, I like the bloods, but Borneos actually, were they did it for me. And the crazy part was Pro Exotics, their site, they had killer striped reg, and they would do these big adult mm-hmm. shots of a whole bunch in a tub. And I did love that. But their Borneos, were, yeah, the, the big, I, I think Rob Rob Stone said that's a, I think it was a Borneo, like a dark Borneo or some yes. He said that thing is massive. It, he's seen yeah. that and held that snake, I believe. But their Borneos were nothing special. But I I fell in love right there. Just the head color, the, the colors, period. And yeah. from there on out, had to get one. Got to, I already think I had a ball python. I got one early. Uh, the pet store I was going to, the guy like reptiles. Uh, I asked him about it. He said his brother's actually a big fan, which I was shocked he even knew what I was talking about because I didn't think anyone <laughs> would know what a bl- – not that I felt like, you know, I was just like, oh, man, because you didn't – I've never seen one in a pet store. I never heard of one when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said we should try the Hamburg Reptile Show. We went up there. I became friends with this guy, which was awesome. Uh, we went up there, Nothing. <laughs> Imagine going to a rep 2000, <laughs> two, early 2003, not, and not one in there. The second time, or the, there was one. There was a marble Borneo. Larry Kenton had it. It might have been, and I'm not trying to say anything about Larry Kenton. It was the ugliest marble Borneo marble, to date. Yeah. I've never, <laughs> Just I, low I, expression. Nothing. And it was, <laughs> six, oh, it, was, it, was <laughs> it was brown. It had nothing. Sp- and it was $650. I had yeah. uh, $250 to spend. So the next show I went to, someone was, there was, once again, nothing. A guy walked around and I bought a red blood out of his book bag, which obviously turned <laughs> out to be a mistake. But from there on out, I started finding them. And that's kind of how it happened. I mean, from 2003 on, I just kept building the collection. And really, my focus has been Borneo short tails, blood pythons, Sumatran short tails. Sumatran being the least, but back then I was actually more into them, but just still mm-hmm. didn't have as many. And, had ball pythons, boas, retics, and the collections grown from there. <clears throat> Hell yeah, man. I remember going on the old Pro Exotics website and just staring at their pictures of blood pythons. And there was that one picture of the guy holding the, the really huge one. And he's holding it oh, in the my- middle, kind of like, you know. And it's just all over one side, ha- a stomach hanging in the middle of the <laughs> middle, and then the tail hanging off the end. And the thing was just absolutely massive. And, yeah, well- uh no, I, I didn't even have the uh, I didn't even have internet at my house at the time. My mom had internet at her work, so I had her print out the pictures from the VPI website, and I was just like staring at them. Staring in my at room. it, yeah, yeah. The way I would explain them back then was like they look like there's something wrong, but in the best way. Like yeah. there's something wrong with that. Snake. <laughs> really, did because the girth of the body. I mean, and back then everybody was making them huge, but yeah. the yeah. girth of the body and how short they are compared to the head size just didn't make sense. And I guess to some people that probably looks terrible, but to me it just looked amazing. I'm like, that is yeah. like, I need to have that. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I was somebody when I was younger that was, I wasn't afraid, but I just did not tolerate like, oh, if a snake bites, I'm getting rid of it. Like that's how, like, when I was like 10, 11, yeah. like, and, it, and I had snakes that never really did. And my bow actually took a swing at me and I didn't get rid of it. But um, reading up on these back then, it was like, oh, they are not an easy species. They're, They're very evil. defensive. <laughs> And I didn't care. Like, I was like, I'm, I'm in for it. Like, I don't care. I'll do what I have to do. And, and it wasn't like I was, I wasn't saying like, I need to tame these down and just have them be like, great. I was just like, okay, it's a snake. I'll be looking at more than holding. That's, that's fine yeah. with me. Yeah. So I think that that brings a different level of appreciation to them because the people who are just like, oh, I need to hold it all the time. Uh, I feel like a lot of those people, they treat it like it's their buddy and uh might not look into like all the history and stuff but when you have a snake that you can't really or you're you know you have a tougher time interacting with a lot of times you're like what makes this thing tick 
you know, you, you think a little bit more about what's going on behind the eyes and, and what's yeah. going on in its history and everything. So I feel like a lot of people who end up keeping those snakes that are more for looking at, like, you know, green tree pythons and, and bloods and short tails, kind of. But uh, a lot of those species that are a little bit more just for looking at, uh, people kind of delve into them a little bit deeper than just, you know, oh, I got this little pet snake that I exactly. kind of hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I was first getting them, too, it was I had just a shit time with them. I was keeping them in tanks, but I was trying to do things to give them ventilation, but you may like, I did read up and I was trying mm -hmm. things, but I was also, you know, as a new keeper stubborn in my own ways, like I want to get it to go like this. And the mm -hmm. first couple of doing it in tanks, I was just spending so much at the vet with, with respiratory infections. And the only reason I didn't want to get a rack was because I wanted to see these things. I liked having a room where I walk in, I had like daylights on them and night lights. So when you go in at nighttime, it was all purple. And like, I thought mm -hmm. that was the coolest yeah. thing. So a rack was like, oh, I can't really see them. And then I got an animal plastics rack. And then all of a sudden for two years, I had zero problems. So I was like, okay, racks, isn't it? Like, I, Sold, I, love, yeah. I, love, I love, I love racks. You know what I mean? Because in tanks and even like I had these other cages and all this stuff, I tried everything and it was just a nightmare to keep them. It really was. And, mm -hmm. and then there was also like I, in Philadelphia, there was a herb society. I wasn't, it was dying down as I was getting in, but I got to meet like people that were like the big keepers in Philadelphia. And I just had so many people like, don't waste your time there. It's not going to go well. I tried to keep them and I just didn't listen. And I mean, yep. hey, it, it seemed to work out for me pretty good. So I mean, <laughs> I'd uh, say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look, they still throw me curveballs. It's still, I mean, like I said, they're one of them species where I just don't think, I think people overplay the easiness. Like they're not so mm. hard. I wouldn't even consider them intermediate, but they're like right under that because they can be very unpredictable. They're not tolerant of mistakes. And yeah. if they go downhill, it's, it's real fast. And if you don't know what you're looking at or what you're hearing or what you're seeing, it can be, it can be intimidating and it can be just, you can just feel defeated. So, I mean, like I said, I, you guys keep them. I still feel defeated this to this day when something happens and I've been keeping <laughs> them. I've been keeping them since 2003. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I just want to give a quick shout out to Malcolm Hunter. Just threw a super chat down. Thank you, Malcolm. This is, hey, Jeremy and Rob. <clears throat> Keep it rocking, guys. Love the content. What an inspiration. One more away from 100. Let's go for 100 more beyond that. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. down. I'm so down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, NPR just celebrated their, what, 500th episode? So I think that we yeah. can run in another 100. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we can do at least one more 100. Yeah, I think yeah. they're going on their 12th year, man. That's crazy. That's insane. Sheesh. Yeah. 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 Man. Um, when, it, when it comes to Bloods and Short Tails, one of the main reasons why I tell people that they're intermediate is be, because of the, the handling mistakes. It's like they're, they're not super hard to keep. But if people pick them up the wrong way or they pick it, I see a lot of people, the biggest mistake they do is they pick it up like a ball python where a lot of people, they pick up a ball python and they like immediately roll it on its back. Oh, yeah. If you do that with a blood, it's going to oh. piss on you. And then like, <laughs> you're like, it's, it's not going to have a good time and they don't tolerate that. So like when I tell people that like, hey, if you're thinking about getting a blood or short tail, see if you can handle a few of them first and get a feel for how they work. Because once you figure out how to like pick them up and like, handle them safely they're, they're not hard it's just that a lot of people their mind isn't set to that going yeah. from working with ball pythons or corn snakes or anything else they're just a little bit different in that way yeah yeah for sure and uh, you guys both know it's hard to explain to people that don't know that thrash they do is is like no other snake i mean <laughs> yes and really especially ones like people keep i mean i i haven't held all the venomous snakes I, a gaboon would be i guess compared to a short tail i don't know if when they get insanely mad if you were handling them they do that but i've never seen them make that action from what i see just short tails just have that i mean other snakes flail and, and do all that but when short tails do it it's, it's way different it's so yeah. much different. And, and and if they do it in the cage in the cage or the tub you could just hear it it sounds like yeah. thunder it really mm -hmm. does it's, it's just like what the hell is going on over there what what it's freaked so that true. snake out and you're just like all right i'm not opening that now because it's just gonna lose itself. <laughs> so you just you just gotta wait till later i mean they definitely teach you uh, a lot of patience and like that's i meant yeah. to say that too when i was if you can get by all the stuff the obstacles especially like when i when i was doing it, there wasn't a lot of good information when i started mm -hmm. and to spend the money and overcome all that and just stick with it. They taught me a lot about patience and, and I don't feel like I had as much patience back then. So now in other species, it's, you know, I'm, I'm in for the, 
get whatever they can throw at me and, and I don't quit on it. You know what I mean? I feel like short tails was definitely the hardest at the time, you know, like that's, I mean, now it's, a, it's definitely easier, but it's still, still could be hard, especially if someone's new or doesn't know about the species as much. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that I really appreciate about them is, you know, behaviorally, like if you start paying attention to what they're telling you, it's their signs are probably some of the most easily visible. <laughs> they're not yeah. happy, yes. you know? So I had, uh, this is a few expos ago. I had somebody who's interested in one. They wanted to hold one. And like, usually I'm the guy that's like, unless you're serious about buying, I'm not, you know, taking the animals out for people to hold, but they were really interested. So I was like, all right, maybe this could sway them. But they were like, I hear they're really mean and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, 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 that's no. all, it's all just <laughs> hype and whatever. I was like, here's a trick. If you're holding it and you notice, you know, the, the tongue tip the, the is tips. sticking out, you know, I'm like, just put it back in the thing. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, they'll tell you. And sure enough, as soon as they saw it, they put it down and then it lost its mind. And I was like, look at that. Yeah. You didn't get bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but that uh, that ability to utilize them as a teaching tool as far as understanding snake behavior, you know, just because that tell is so easily noticeable once you know I need to pay attention for it, it's a, a great tool. Yeah. And another one with them, even without the fork tongue, it's, it comes right after, or sometimes they do it, is the complete freeze. The kick yeah. one, that, that yes. too, the, so at a lot of shows too, I didn't let a lot of people handle, but someone would be like, I'm not worried about it. And it would finally just like freeze. Like, oh, look at that. It's calming down. I would say, listen, go closer to the show. <laughs> <Put it. laughs> I would say, put, put your hand right over the showcase because it's probably about to lose itself. And <laughs> nine out of 10 times it would, it would do the flip thing and then it would urate all over the place and they're yeah. like, oh, oh. And they would like, how'd you know that was happening? I said, yeah, just from seeing them, you know, I know that's, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it was fine one second. And then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, that's, that's how, that's how, how you did so you, you, it either didn't want to be held or you did something it didn't like, you know, yeah. I, I, I always let them know, like, it's not your fault. It's just, you're at a show. There's a lot going on. That's a why lot. They're, not the, they're really not the greatest thing to for a show like when people, everybody wants to hold it and i do understand that but it's really it's not the snake for that no yeah. it's definitely it's definitely not um want to give another shout out to james always hanging out with us says love reptile talk appreciated chatting at repticon raleigh at the end of november remember to hit that like button yes always a pleasure talking with you man i had a great time there and uh, yes hit the like button wherever you are whatever platform <laughs> you're listening on hit the like button yeah, I, I think that um, uh, after people learn a little bit of what to look for, and, and one of the things that when we're talking about like how they kind of thrash or like flick them, flick their bodies or whatever, I usually tell people, hey, look, most of the time when they do that, they're just trying to like scare you. So if you drop them, they're going to get scared and then they're probably going to get pissed off. And yeah. so usually what I do is I just hold them in the middle and kind of let them do that, get it out of their system because most of the time they don't bite. They're just flailing just to really get you get you to let him go uh but if you can hold on to him for a second and not drop them they usually chill out i have had a couple that will flail and bite like whatever they're touching but almost all the ones that i work with on a or have worked with they just kind of like throw their body and then after that they kind of freeze for a second and if you can kind of recompose them they'll they'll get their brain back together but uh, I have had a couple where they flick their bodies and then they start biting anything that's touching them. Like, okay, you gotta, you gotta go back. Yeah, that's always, that's always a fun, a fun uh, time right there. When they do that. yeah. <clears throat> that's a, that's the, the Dan Magano ocelot. That's, that's, oh, no. that's, that's what I got. Uh, that's, and that was, for, and, that, and that was produced by me, correct? Yes, it was. <laughs> He yeah, made they, sure he's like he's like Matt. It's just got evil snakes. Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 hey, I give it to Dan. I, I said it. I said it before. Like that guy really does work on the temperament. For me, temperament it really. I like if it's good, great. I mm -hmm. don't want a super defensive snake, but at the same time, it's it is what it is to me. Like I, yeah. it's more of a viewing thing to me. I, and I, I work well with the ones that are just temperamental because like I said, I go, I go one light glove on if they are and one hand off. And that just makes all the difference in the world. A snake where if you go mm -hmm. in barehanded, they will just sit there and plan their strike. And just that glove coming in, 
just to scoop them under. It, it does enough to where if they do that flail thing, they just like Rob said, they do that, they get it all out of their system, and then you're good to move them around to check them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's really all it is. I've talked to so many people where like, oh, I'm doing so good at it. And I'm like, I, I know people like want to frown about, oh, a glove and all that stuff. But I mean, as it's like, if I get bit in this glove, there's really not going to protect me. It's just to take the heat off my hand. And yeah. I said, it's important to have one bare hand so you can feel the temperature of the snake and, and you know, you get the, the feeling of it. But if that lead hand is the glove, you're usually in the clear. You know what I mean? Like that's, mm-hmm. especially for the ones that freak. Yeah. Other, otherwise, you don't, you don't need it. But that's, I mean, and that maybe that's why me and Dan are so different. He's paying attention to the temperament. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, Ooh, two pretty snakes, put them together. And make more yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I look at you, so I don't. You know, I just, I only have to move you for a minute. I don't sit there and, and exactly. hold you like on camera. But you know, more power to Dan. It's it's good someone is doing that kind of stuff. And I know Kara also focused on that kind of stuff with you know trying to make them better and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It it is it is always interesting. I, I know, like Rob, you and I experienced with Retix, like different morphs that had different mm-hmm. behavioral things. So it's interesting to see that people are are kind of working on focusing on temperament with so many different species and that it does seem to be something that's inheritable regardless of genetic uh, traits involved, but just focusing a lot on that. It's interesting that that can carry forward. Well, the retics, I think it's a bit more important, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. A bit more important. Yeah. Just a bit, just a yeah. bit. I mean, unless you're playing with uh, super dwarfs, then it's, uh, it's whatever. Well, no, yeah, it's still I, important. I, I, <laughs> Well, not fun because they got so much body to go at you. That's why, like, uh, I don't have much. I don't have any experience with scrubs, but scrubs just sound very difficult, man. Because they're just so smart and they just can get you from everywhere. Like I was over, I got to visit Dennis McNamara's, and he just was like, when I was seeing his collection, he was just telling me, like, oh yeah, man, when I go in there, it can, like if I open that up and I'm here, it can get me easy. And oh I'm yeah, just like, wow. easy. It's just, it's so crazy, but. Uh, <laughs> It's it's got to be. I mean, Rob, like you have them, you work with them. It's got to be tough some days. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on those days, I just kind of let them do their thing. And I'm like, okay, I'll clean you tomorrow. I don't need. Yeah. I don't need to mess with you today. <laughs> and uh, but uh, honestly, same thing. I uh, with my um, I have a, a pair of Southern Scrubs, and my younger male or my male is like super chill. Once he's as soon as you get a little hook under him, you can just scoop him up. He's great. You can touch his face. He's awesome. And the female. Not so much. Not not exactly so much. <laughs> she uh, she's a, a peer and a biter. But what I've done after I moved is I moved her from a tub into an enclosure where she sees me coming in and out of the room every day. And then the times where I'm holding her now, I'm working on hooking her out, getting her to just chill on the hook for a minute. And then after that, kind of let her come on to me. And she hasn't bitten me now in while she still take a swing every now and again but she's calming down and i think that uh, the more that i work with them the, the better they're going to get but i've noticed with the baby scrubs janet's babies they're all awesome literally i had when they first hatched out and i opened up the egg box and the first one came out of the egg that one struck at me when i opened up the egg box since then none of them has struck at me they're all super chill i can go right in there scoop them to up just like i scoop up janet and they are all just really, really laid back. And I think that that really has a lot to do with her disposition. The dad's disposition is, is pretty chill too, but I think that really is showing through um, from her. And I'm hoping that that continues because yeah, that's awesome. 10, ten yeah. baby scrubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say also with temperament and defensive behavior, if you want to own a lot of scrubs, it's a, it would be nice to have them not all be <laughs> – <laughs> you know, so keen to want to defend themselves and yeah. just take a swipe at your eyes all the time. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a, a, a young female barnack that's like just probably six foot now, and she is a menace, bro. Like sometimes, like I see her over in the corner, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna like take take a temp gun reading inside the enclosure. I'm just gonna take a look at the water, make sure everything's cool, and I'll open up the the drop down and she's in a three foot a three foot by 18 by 18 enclosure and i uh i pop it open and then all of a sudden her her mouth is like right at my face and i'm like you know diving <laughs> oh, out no. of the way I'm like geez I, you were in the back like asleep what is going on right now Damn. <laughs> yeah, so no. having more friendly scrubs makes it easier for cleaning time yeah uh, <laughs> Uh, just a, just a little easier, just a little, just a little easier. bit. 
That's a little <laughs> bit. They're just so smart. Like when you're using a hook, they know that it's the hook. So like you go in, if you go in with a, a glove or your hand, they're going to like come right up to you and, and, you know, check you out. But with yeah. the hook, they come like halfway and they're like, oh, that's not, that's not the immediate threat. I need to figure out what's controlling that hook. And they're looking around to see where your hand's at. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It makes cleaning day more fun. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting to me because from working with so many retics at Nerd, the retics are just like chewing on the snake hook. Like, yeah, I got it. Don't worry. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> and I have never once in my life seen a scrub python do that. They'll go right up to it and like maybe nose bump it, but they're like, oh, this is not the thing. And then they're looking around at what else is going on where retics, you know, nine times out of 10, they're like, feed me that snake hook. I'll eat it right now. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> All sense is yeah. lost. Yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, gosh. Okay, so jumping back back to Borneo's for a second. Yes. yes. Uh, so, Matt, I, I think there's there's two. There, there's uh, obviously you're known for so much Borneo stuff related stuff, but I think there's two standout Borneo morphs uh, morphs. I'll say in quotes because we all know how that goes. Uh, that are like you're you're so well known for, and that's the extreme marble stuff and the ocelot stuff. So. Two very different looking animals. Yeah, uh, very much. What uh, what sent you in those two directions, and and was there one? Is there one of those two that really maybe has your heart a little more than the other? Uh, well, marbles is what I really. I mean, I had a normal couple normal Borneos first, but marbles was so early on. Um, going to Hamburg, Mike Estakos was always there. Um, mm -hmm. Mike's like family. Mike uh, worked originally with Keith with the marble so he had his stock was crazy you know and throughout hamburg he probably sold other people marble so when they started popping up i mean i could see all these marbles but mike's were stand out way way better mm -hmm. yeah. um you know started buying from him you know every show i was buying a couple marbles uh <laughs> but at that time i loved marbles but Str super stripes had you know that was where i really wanted to be but that was back then when vpi had them and they were five grand so unobtainable right. for me marbles <laughs> Three fifty, four hundred dollars. That was breaking the bank. So five grand. <laughs> I, I remember seeing this was at NARBC Valley Forge, which was like called the Philly Show. That that they mm. had a couple there, and uh, it wasn't VPI. It was the Diaz brothers had. They had this cool display, and they had a pair of VPI Super Stripes, five grand a piece. And I was just staring. Mm. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, like I, I what I wouldn't do for those. But um. Yeah, so the marbles, I was able to produce them. And then I obviously found my own way into stripes. I found a stripe at a at a uh, Lytic show that was unknown. Matt Jablonski back then helped me trace. It took us forever to trace it back. It wound up being the, my Philly Herp stripe line, which is kind of dead now because I mixed it in with Oslo so much and I kind of let it go away, which kind of sucks because it had a cool look. Mm -hmm. I can pro I do have a couple with that look and it's half and half and mm -hmm. probably know some people with the straight up ones and I could try to find, but it would be, it'd be hard. Um, so started getting into stripes, found them stripes at Hamburg that were unknown that turned out to be the Oslet gene. Mm -hmm. And in 2012, I believe is when I first hit the Oslet and, you know, immediately, you know, I'm talking to Keith as I think, I believe I was talking to Kara, I was talking to everyone I knew and they're like, it's yours, man. I don't think it's like anything else. And you got to name mm -hmm. it. Because I was so nervous. Like, oh, I, th I don't know. I don't think it's a name thing yet. You know? <laughs> and they're like, no, you got to put something on it because it's something different. You know, so. And it turned out it, it did. It stuck. And I and, uh, got them both. And the Extreme Marble just popped out from keeping the best of the best, adding the best of the best. And that's not, you know, everybody thinks it's a super. Whatever, you know, it's just a marble that's gone a long way. You know, and Keith always... I always feel great with Keith because he loves the marble and he looks in awe of that, which is so cool for me because he's like, you took it somewhere where I always want to take and I let it kind of fizzle out when the ghost gene came about. And he goes, I didn't think it could ever go mate like there that and far. you're taking it to new levels. So I go back and forth. I, I do love the extreme marbles. It's newer. So it's kind of mm. still in that. I mean, it's not brand new, but it's newer where the oscillates I've been staring at, but oscillates still just show so much. And their regular offspring are genetic stripes and super stripes and white walls are part of it. So it, mm. it I don't know. It, it's like month to month, year to year. You, <laughs> any, any given day you can catch me. I might be like, oh, I'm so on the extreme Marvel. I'm so on the Oslo. The awesome <laughs> thing is I, I've got them both. I love them both. And 
the thing about extreme marbles is I do love them, but I could, I love a nice, just awesome marble too. Like that marble mm-hmm, that yeah. you had, Rob, is something that I want to get. It's brightly colored. I love the pattern. Mm-hmm. I want stuff like that again, but now I'm starting to be able to not get it. So I was a couple of years ago, I was just searching for marbles to just try to get marbles again because I, it's just fun to make everything. You know what I mean? It's not always yeah. about hit, hitting the ceiling. I've also dialed back to where it's hard for me to just hit super stripes now almost. So mm-hmm. found the VPI super stripe. I got a VPI super stripe from Tracy and like, I'm obsessed with it. And like, you both have the same look I love mm-hmm. and you've got to make more of just them. Cause I need more. Cause I only have, yes. <laughs> yeah. cause I could have 20 of them and be so happy because they all yeah. have slightly different looks and they got that burnt orange with the black line and the tri striping. Mm-hmm. And, yes. And like, I, I used to be able to make stuff like that with, VP, I had VPI stuff mixed with Oslet and Philly Herp line, stripe line stuff. And like I said, it's I still have lots of stripes there, but it's I'm not making them as frequent. And my mm-hmm. super stripes look like Oslet super stripes. I want to make those kind of super stripes again. So to me, it's mm-hmm. all different. And I, that's why I keep so many because I like to have each. I don't know. I'm just obsessed with keeping a little bit of everything. Like I have to have everything. <laughs> so it's awesome, but it sucks because it just involves yeah. keeping so many. Yeah. I think that's that's probably the the hardest part about such a polygenic species is like, man, you're gonna in every clutch there's bound to be wh- at least <laughs> one that you're like, yeah, you gotta stay here, man. One, you mean ten? Yeah, yeah you mean least. ten? That's why I said at least. I'm trying to make it so that people in the comments might actually want to buy them and not suddenly be like, well, I guess I'm gonna have a hundred snakes in two years. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited if I only see seven I want to keep. That's exactly. exactly. <laughs> If it's if I'm like oh, only seven good, it's not double digits. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Oh man, it is so true though. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah, like, I remember. I... I remember Rob when you had the one clutch. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. I, I think I'm only going to try to keep one or two, and that turned into like you you kept almost the whole clutch. Yeah, almost think. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 You didn't like let anything go. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, oh I kept man! Much from that. <laughs> yeah. I think every episode we did after that clutch was how many holdbacks is it now? Yeah, just... <laughs> like Let's I said, I, I breed because I'm my own biggest customer. Anything else yeah. I can yeah. make, it, and I can let you know, I can make some money. I can get people good Borneos, awesome. But I'm doing it for me. I mean, I, I don't know if that sounds selfish or not, but that's how it's always been. I've wanted, I've wanted to make myself stuff and i still like buying stuff because you got to add new stuff and it's cool to see what other people are doing mm-hmm. i want some of what dan's got but you know he's not gonna let he's not gonna come off of anything i can't be mad about that there's been plenty yeah. of times he goes i'm guessing you're not coming off of this and i'm like no definitely not nah. so, <laughs> and being close to dan you guys know i'll eventually if i don't get it this year i'm sure he'll have tomorrow i'll get it one of these years so yeah 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 <laughs> Uh, oh, it's uh, it's just so interesting to me to see like uh, what the different routes that people are going now because there are more a little few more people breeding Ooh. Borneos now than there than there really have been, and with each clutch that we're seeing now, we're seeing people take it in like completely different directions because like I remember seeing pictures from uh, the Arlington the Arlington NARBC show and seeing people taking pictures of Tracy's table. And like seeing those super stripes on there, and I'm like, why is not? Why is everyone not buying like six of these? They're yeah. they're, they're not yeah. expensive. They're like, and they're priced to go. I know. I, yeah. I don't understand it. It's it's like people are so blinded by. I like I love reds, but they're so blinded by the reds, they just miss mm-hmm. on the boring. And it's crazy because they. It's not even the reds. Sometimes it's the mutations. Which yeah, yeah, I have them. I like them. I'm not trying to down on mutations, but. I mean, if you do like reds, I mean, nothing beats the reds. Like exactly. to me, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Ivories are cool. Matrix are cool. All, all that stuff's cool, but the reds, you know, mm-hmm. uh, me, me, it's stripe reds. Uh, I'm really liking, I got a pair of that slack line stuff. I can't wait to add Ooh, that to just stripe stuff. Yes. To me, to me, it's a stripe. It's a big giant wide stripe. And yep. it's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. What, uh, what, what level, what slack line level? The, 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 the main level, they're slack lines. They got the big wide stripe. Three, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got, I got a pair of them. And I got a level two male. Okay. And the cool. male and the male's really cool. Yeah, he's really he's not. Heck yeah. He's defensive. He does, he takes a <laughs> shot at everything. He takes a shot at everything he can. But whatever. He's he's really cool. But the slack lines themselves are uh, they're pretty they're pretty t- uh, nice. They're not they're not too bad. 
Heck they yeah. are awesome, bro. They I really are. Love them. <laughs> I love I them. <laughs> and to me, it's just a big giant. Who who makes who was making them? Uh, Ashley Baker was making really big wide stripes like that, mm-hmm. and I got mm-hmm. one of her offspring. Alexa makes like really nice yeah, big wide Alexa stripes stuff, like that. Yep. That stuff's killer every time. I always want it. I know she's keeping all the stuff that I would want, and I don't. <laughs> I'm spoiled, so I don't settle. So I just wait. You know. <laughs> Maybe one year she won't be able to keep it all. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, too good. Um, okay, we're gonna take a quick uh, two-minute uh, ad break, and we'll be right back, guys. Black Box Cages, located in Buford, Georgia, is your one-stop shop for all of your caging and rack needs. Owners Jen and Clint are at the helm of this fantastic company. With one of the shortest lead times in cage and rack manufacturing, Black Box can satisfy anyone's needs. From baby racks to V70s, arboreal and terrestrial caging to deep-fronted bioactive enclosures. You can find everything you need right here. New enclosure sizes and products are added frequently to their availability, so be sure to check back often. Black Box cages have tons of customizing options for lighting and heating. Along with that, cages and racks can be stacked with metal stacking dowels, and all cage joints are datoed for improved durability and stability. Most cage units are flat packed, but are pre-assembled prior to shipping to ensure a solid build every time. The Micro, XC18, XT3, BioG, and 3-stack V70 ship assembled, and all other racks are shipped freight and assembled. The XR16 and XR20 model racks allow keepers to mix and match tubs. Fitting both Vision and Freedom Breeder tubs, you can mix the V15, V18, and V35S tubs, or the FB5, FB8, and FB35CV SC tubs. This kind of flexibility allows keepers to raise their animals from hatchling to juvenile or sub-adult size before needing to upgrade into adult caging. Don't just take our word for it. Go to their website to see countless customer reviews and review videos from keepers all over. To learn more about Black Box Cages, follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Cages. And of course, their website, www.blackboxcages.com. Links to their socials and website will be available in the podcast description. Boom. So you guys already know the deal. Make sure you go check out Black Box Enclosures. Go get yourself a new cage and always check back to their website because they're always adding new products. And I think they're running a Christmas giveaway right now or something. They like that. are running a Christmas giveaway and you can go check out all that on their Instagram. Details are there. It's a big uh, cage too. So if you've got uh, ambitions for a big snake or a big lizard or even just want to give your smaller uh, reptile a bigger enclosure, you should go check it out on their Instagram. Absolutely. And all those links are down in the description of this podcast uh, and the YouTube video. And if you're listening to the audio only at a later point, it's down there. But uh, hopefully you're not listening too far in the future. Otherwise, you've missed this opportunity and you're late. So sorry. (laughs) Oh, gosh. So, so many different directions to go with Borneos for sure. But now I want to know, what are your thoughts on uh, the albinos, the sunset and the mocha that have been around for a little while now yeah. uh, that we're just starting to <clears throat> kind of see trickle out there? I like them. I, I like them. Uh, they were pretty affordable uh, from a couple people uh, and still don't have any, being a little stubborn, yeah. kind of, uh, <laughs> kind, like I said, I like them as is, but I kind of yeah. want to see where they go. I'm sure I, I definitely want one or two in my collection for sure, but it's one of them things where I'm going to let people work it out, see what mm-hmm. they do. And then mm-hmm. uh, I'll probably jump on that, you know, and, uh, you know, get on there when something's a little bit crazier or you guys haven't figured out a bit more. So I know you guys, I know you have some and yep. uh, the stuff I've been seeing is, is pretty nice, but to me, it still doesn't be just Borneo straight up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, but it is cool. I do think they can, uh, you guys can work them into some cool directions, and I'm I'm pretty anxious to see where they go. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's, it's hard to beat the 
the natural look of the Borneos for sure. I definitely do agree. I, I've found myself becoming very partial to the, the mocha side of the yeah. albino stuff. I think there's a little bit more color and contrast at play. So I think mocha is the one I like more too. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I'm interested. But I mean, also, who knows how Sunset plays out when if you get it into some darker stuff, like some of that VPI super striped stuff or maybe some of the skunk line stuff. Like of course, who, knows, yeah. who knows what that's going to do. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, uh, we can't even forget to mention the lilac. I want to see that thing when it's three feet long because yes. <laughs> I bet you that thing is going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's, yeah, it should be really cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the best and the worst part about Borneos is waiting for that or uh, watching that color change happen. It's yeah. the best and yeah. the worst. <laughs> for sure, yeah. And, and it kind of stinks because a lot of people feel uh, – I think that's what does Borneo's bad. They feel that it gets darker. Uh, that's how they are. Not everything, but like yeah. the lighter stuff, they seem to, like, oh, it just dulls out. But it doesn't really dull out. It turns into a different color. And if yeah. you have it and you wind up keeping it, you see that it has all this different contrast and you get all the pinks in the neck. And some of it doesn't, though. I mean, with Oslo stuff and a lot of ghost stuff I've seen, it stays very, very light. So, and it's, it's also yeah. something you can work on. <laughs> so, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, like, I get it. When it came to Ultra and Latte, even though I love that stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, initially, you didn't have a lot to go off of. And you see this, like, white-looking baby in the terms gunmetal gray and gets the silvers. But, yeah. I mean, have you – like, some of them original Lattes and, and, and Ultras mm -hmm. were unbelievable looking. Like, people just yeah. were like, oh, it's not white anymore. It's like, but are you not paying attention? Like, yeah. can you see that? It has, a, <laughs> like, it, it has this, this silver to it where all the – light colors pop it like it made it so crazy like i, I met jordan mullen had just like mm -hmm. he had the to me he had the best ultras back in the day those things were just mm. they would just pop you know what i mean i think tim mead took it over that his collection yep. or animals from him so then tim mead had nice ultras so it was yeah that, that was a cool cool time for them and i feel like ultras kind of i don't know i guess they got bred into a bunch of other stuff they kind of lost not completely but that look used to be so much more prominent now and you don't mm -hmm. really see it anymore plus mm -hmm. i don't think people know what ultra is it's obviously <laughs> something carrying the gene but you see it says ultra and you're like that's not an ultra that's not an ultra i see no. that all the, all the time yeah the mislabeling I, there's not much i guess we can do about it besides keep trying to educate people but it's mislabeling for borneos is off the charts <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. just i that's mean how many how many times have you seen a super stripe that doesn't have a, a resemblance of a stripe? You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. got it and, and got bands over the back. It's like, that's a normal. I mean, or, yeah. or some, you know, it's a some normal variation pattern. of a stripe. Yeah. No, it's a yeah. BPI super stripe. Trust me. I, yeah, you know, like, I got it from Tracy. I'm like, I bet, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's the desire of, uh, I guess, I, I mean, I guess you could just say it like the, the ball python market. Yeah. right it's yeah. like it's gotta have a name if it doesn't have a name you can't market it then it's garbage and blah 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 and it's like no man you have to be willing to open up your mind to the fact that not everything is a traditional genetic trait yeah <laughs> yeah and you could just have some fun i mean you just put you know it's it, you could if you like to mess with genetics and get different offspring i mean that's a cheap good way to have fun and it's a complete shocker i mean so mm -hmm. not all the time but half the time it is you don't know what's coming and it could be like I always tell people that you you could have two Borneo, one pair and have the clutch of the next five years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's all it takes because it's just like no rhyme or reason to how some of these looks come out in Borneos. It doesn't, yeah. you know. And uh, I think that when when people look at it, like uh, people coming from ball pythons, they just go, oh, it's simple Mendelian genetics. So they're like, oh, it's a recessive trait. So I bred a super stripe to a normal and so they're striped they're super stripes and it's like no that's not how it works so <laughs> yeah, I, is, you know I think that's where, how it looks i think that's where the, mis the genetics come from too they take something that maybe is a genetic stripe they breed it to something all the animals come out normal and they're just like well they're all genetic stripes now and it's like well Matt, that's not really no, the way it works no, that's not <laughs> the way it works not no. at all 
Oh, man. It's okay, Ball Python people. One day you'll understand. <laughs> no, they yeah. won't. No, they won't. Because no, we don't won't. understand it. No. So. We, don't, we don't understand, and they skip over Borneos, which I'm fine with, and go right yeah. to 007s and 9Ps and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going there if you want. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the, the first time I saw a picture of a magpie, I was absolutely floored, and I was like, oh. this is the coolest blood python I've ever seen. That I don't know how they're going to make a blood python that's cooler than this and then after i saw pictures of them at like two and three years old i was like okay this is not really what i was expecting <laughs> yeah. yeah um not not as cool as i thought it was going to be um granted there, there i've seen some that are still really cool but that black and white baby is just like the most incredible looking little blood python and i was expecting it to kind of look similar i don't know why i was expecting it to look similar oh, yeah, but they, any sense but they kind of do what a borneo does but i yes. think to be honest with you, like, I mean, and, and you're right now, magpies, golden eyes, 007s. I mean, I've seen some golden eyes as adults and 007s that are unbelievable, but there was a time when they were, I hate to say it, but pretty ugly. Like they, and yeah. they yeah. didn't get that silver or that contrasty look. They would just get dark. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. really dark. And mm-hmm. a couple of the early magpies you would see, you were kind of like, Ugh. like that was a little, yeah. little stunning <laughs> that they weren't like, they just didn't have anything to them because there was nothing. It was just a patternless snake and it kind of just, it didn't really tan, silver like, or gray out. It kind of yeah. just tan, dark tan down. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't do what, it, <laughs> what you thought it would do, but I think it is getting better. Obviously it's just, yeah. just like anything does, you keep on working with it. And that stuff yeah. Elijah hatched, I think is going to be pretty white. That stuff. Bro. Is really <laughs> yeah. yeah. That stuff's crazy, man. So yeah. many people, so many people hit it at the park this year. You know what I mean? Like Dan mm-hmm. killed it on Borneo's. Elijah yep. killed it with Bloods. Nick always has some crazy stuff over there. There's mm-hmm. a yep. lot. Of, I mean, there's just everybody. There's so many good clutches. You you crushed it, Rob. Like with some of the stuff you were producing, Jeremy. That stuff on Morph Market. It's stuff that I can hatch, and I'm like, maybe I should buy that one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy. So it's. Yeah, yeah I, I think that we're just starting to come into uh, kind of a golden era of Bloods and Borneos and Short Tails as we're getting some of these genetics spread around. Because, like, um, you know, when it's one person or two people that are producing, you know, it, the, it doesn't give you a more full idea of how amazing like how crazy things can be yeah and then yeah. as these genetics are starting to go into other people who are breeding them into other things like i sold a couple of people some skunk line animals and they're talking to me about the stuff that they're planning on doing with it and i'm like that is not what i was going to do with it but i really but do awesome. want to see what awesome. happens yeah. when that comes out yeah. it's yeah. going to look awesome <laughs> yeah and uh and like like you were saying the ultra stuff was really prominent for like probably 10 years you could find ultras at like every show and then i feel like the last what two years three years i haven't really seen a lot i mean i think dynasty posted it some but like i haven't seen a lot of people posting ultras like actual ultras that are yeah. the classic ultra looking or ghost type stuff yeah and lattes they're all kind of mm-hmm. I, I hate I, I hate that they're getting lost and it's not because they're not there they're just getting lost into whatever you know because borneos is such a niche thing and I kind of missed the days where there were more people, me, you, Dan, and all that. Like, we're the people focusing on them. I want more people to jump in head first. Like, that's their main, yeah. like, they, that's what they love. And mm. I see there's people on the Blood Pythons group, and there is some people really starting to focus on Borneo. So I hope that mm. grows and yeah. we get back to that, you know, mid, to, you know, 2010 thing where there were so many people just geeked on Borneos and it was. Throwing Such a crazy cool time. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had Tim Mead throwing Oreos and then you know, it was a Jordan Mullen with the, all the uh, atomic ultras and yeah, uh, all that stuff was just yeah. insane. Side swipes was just, were just coming out. You were seeing mm-hmm. different looks of granite and marble. Yeah. All the different super stripe lines were all at once. I mean, I missed that stuff from, I told Kara, she's got to make more like, the blood cell stripe lines. So those yeah. were awesome. Like, I need more of them. Yeah. I need more. Of, I have one downstairs. I'm, I haven't bred her in forever. She's my biggest girl. She just would never give me a good clutch. I don't know why, but I was mm-hmm. like, you know, she's been on the shelf for like five years. I'm braiding her this year. And I had a pretty good amount of put her to. Heck yeah. They, yes. they, I did catch them locked once, but they're the least amount locked. So hopefully yeah. I see something out of that. 
It's still oh, early, yeah. man. I feel like I like when I was reading stuff, I was thinking like I don't even pair stuff up until like January or like you know oh, the, really? end December, um, the end of December. I'm late. I used to go Halloween. Halloween is when yeah, I would start. Really? The last couple of years I would be November. And last year was November and I was like, I'll start doing it now. And this year I didn't get it. I think the first time I paired stuff was like December fifth or sixth or something mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, but I am yeah. getting a lot of locks. They weren't I just pulled them a couple of days ago. They weren't supposed to go in a couple of days, but we got like sleet and rain. So I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. they're all going back. Throw it in, throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, you know, but I've been seeing a good amount of locks. Uh, so fingers crossed for everything. Nothing, nothing's guaranteed. Hell yeah, man. Heck that yeah. is awesome. I, I hope that she goes for you. Like fingers crossed. Cause that would yeah. be freaking awesome. And yeah. I have my favorite pairing this year, which I really hope goes is this super striped, that carries Oslo jeans, but it's really odd looking. She bred before. Mm-hmm. And I got one of them Mike Ellis side swipe animals. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that goes. They both look similar, but just different colors. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So that'll be cool. I hope that goes. That's my Dude. that's my favorite pairing of the year. And hey, now that I said you? that, it's due. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we'll see what happens. Jinxed it. Jinxed yeah. it. Okay, so now selfish question for me. Uh, how are the uh, rough scales doing? So the rough scale babies uh, struggled with some of them. I still mm-hmm. have, I had hatched 10. I'm not a force feeder. I'm really not. Mm-hmm. I let things yep. happen as it is. I actually broke my rule and tried with a couple of them because they just weren't going. And just like I thought they really didn't take off. So yeah. I got five. I got three going strong. Two are doing like they're starting to take a lot. Just a but, little. Dude, the other five, they just started for they were they they dropped off. They they took forever to fizzle out. I mean, I hatched them things in like August and they had nothing mm-hmm. in them besides I was doing mouse legs to try. And it just mm-hmm. like I said, it wasn't taking off. It just really yeah. wasn't. I never feel I haven't done a assist feed or a force feed in forever, and I just hate it, but I could not get these things to bite. And I had a lot of, you know, Brett, Brett Bender was helping me. I had a lot of cool people, like, you know, give me tips. What really worked for me was dropping a live pink in there and mm-hmm. use chick with chick down all over it. But it had to be live. So I had to, like, wet it, throw chick down all over it, and they would swoop it up. And now it's to the point uh, where it's no more chick down. So, yeah. yeah. So Only a little I, bit easier. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get them to bite anything. Me. So that's, that's what crazy. Was, that's what, it just was so hard. And now they're eating, they will bite me, all of them. So it's just like, <laughs> but it's really cool, really cool stuff. They obviously have the year off this year. Both look great. Mm. I could have probably paired them again, but yeah, very cool stuff. They are um, rough scales. I, I know they don't look like much, but they are the way they move and act. It's one of the only snakes I really take out and actively hold. They just feel so cool. Their yeah. eyes are neat looking. The the way they move around in your hand, uh, the way they are in their cage, it's a really cool species. Heck yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's one of the one of the few species that I don't currently have that I want. Like it's one of the only other species of snakes that I will buy in the near get future. Them. They are cool. They are very yeah. cool. And once you get them established, I think they're a pretty rock solid snake. And my male's not the best. He's bit a few people and just taking a swipe at me, but the female's like a puppy dog. I mean, I hand her to my daughter and my daughter can hold her. So she's Hell yeah. she's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Have has the male uh done the the, the flare, like the bottom jaw flare? No, but no, but he's at the back of my room and they're in cages. And when mm. he's hung, like he skips meals, like he's not one that eats all the time, but never scares me. But like what, he doesn't do it because he's like, oh, you walk by. But when he's hungry, dude, he will not stop hitting the glass. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I know when you open it, he will just sit there and look at you. But I, I've never seen the threat display, which is a little disappointing because I would like to see it. Although yeah. that means they're extremely pissed off. And maybe <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I just I always recall the uh, there's an old snake bites video when Brian went out to Australia and. Uh, the guys are like, oh, do you want to hold this rough scale python? And the thing is just like lighting him up, like threat displaying everything. And Dude, he's like, all these, too. yeah, man. He's like, all these Aussies thought I was the coolest American in the building because I'm <laughs> lit up by this freaking thing. They've got good teeth, man. Yeah. 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 Sheesh. Mm. Yeah. Definitely a species I, I do want somewhere in the near future. They're awesome. Hell yeah. 
And we can't talk about Aussies without Matt. You got to go to Australia, bro. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. give me a little bit of download because I'm like, I've not been to Australia, and that just seems like incredible. It, it was it was awesome. I went with Keith, Keith's wife Teresa, Rob Stone, and and, and Eric. Great group of people to go with, obviously. Yeah. Ten days. We went to Brisbane. We Rob Stone lays out these amazing plans. He maps it all out himself. <laughs> he puts us in the great, he puts us in these awesome positions to find stuff. And we find stuff, man. We found stuff every oh, single yeah. day. Um, such a good variety of animals. The places we stayed were amazing. Just like I said, a lot, the daytime stuff was hard. We didn't really find too much during the day, but all the hikes were just beautiful. I mean, and you could see all the potential, like what what's there. And then, like I said, at nighttime, we would find stuff. A lot of it was road cruising, but Man, it was it was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable experience. I can't wait to do it again. Even with all the crazy traveling, it was worth it. I I for some reason going there. Um, the last leg of the trip was Vancouver to Brisbane, Australia. It was 15 hours in the plane, yeah. mm. and uh, my my right shin. I just felt like I guess it was pressed against, and my legs never get swollen from a flight or a drive or something, dude. My, I couldn't see my ankles. <laughs> they were so swollen, oh, and my shin was all numb. It's still numb. There's still parts of it that are numb. I don't know what happened, but it's oh man, jeez, it's worth. It was worth it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude, just dude, find like we found so many carpets, and it didn't get old. I mean, you're just walking up, finding a python yes. in the wild. A python. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and right. the highlight, the highlight for me was the bearded dragon we found. Finding dude. a wild bearded dragon was, dude, it was so, and it was on the property we were staying. We're, we're That's driving so back. Cool. We're driving back. We didn't find anything. It was like, we know it's hot. We were getting ready to plan our next thing. And I think Eric spotted it. He goes, dude, what is that? Is that a skink? And then we're like, no, I think it's a bearded dragon. We hop out the it's car like... and dude, it's right there. And like, and yeah, I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw, it looks like Rob saw the pictures. Oh, I saw that the picture. Thing, dude, forget every mutation. That thing is the better coolest. than any red. I mean, like I said, there are cool bearded dragon mutations. I would take that over any bearded dragon mutation. Dude, that thing it just so cool. like hefty and it was just like dark and just like it looked like big, it was... Big beard, threat display, yellow mouth. It was just... And then you could see the pattern on the back. And like I said, it was all bluff. You could hold it and it was just like, that's all it was. It was... I mean, it, when we tried to get it, like scamper away, it took forever. It just sat, sat, like, sat there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> And it's crazy to say, you know, all the stuff we've seen, carpet pythons, you know, a, a lace monitor, and the bearded dragon was the highlight for me. Like, that thing was insane looking, and it was so cool. Heck yeah. Uh, if I saw a lace monitor, I probably would cry. I love the lace, lace monitor monitors was cool. so much, man. The lace monitor was extra cool because we literally just got off the plane. We drove for a little – the first stop like, – after all that travel, the first stop we have is eight hours away. <laughs> That's our Yay! stay. So we're driving. God, Rob, had, Rob had stops in between, and that was our first stop. So we go to this, like, it's like a park. There's like a swing. I mean, it's a it's a trail park, but the swing sets there. There's like a clubhouse building. And, you know, I. And the, lace the, monitors. Yeah, the lace monitor was <laughs> like really cool for me because I was the first one to find a reptile there, and I found the lace monitor. So I was like. I was like, monitor, yes. lace monitor. And we just ran yes. over and it went up the tree. And I was like, and the only reason I found it because I was following a kangaroo. I was trying to see a kangaroo. <laughs> so, yeah, because they were all walking the trail. And I went into, like, the bush, you know, and all that stuff. So I was just looking around. And, and then there, it just, I must have spooked it and ran up a tree. And dude, it just Bro. posed up pretty. Yeah, it was. <sighs> and, and that was the thing I think we all thought we were going to see a bunch of. And that's the only lace monitor we saw on a trip. So that really? Was really? Cool. Yeah, that was it. We didn't see any more. Dude, Dude. that makes Still. it even that much more special. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, I, and I just felt like once you find that one, at least if you found one, you felt like, okay, I, I did what I had to do. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm off the hook now because I found something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Exactly. Yeah. When I went to Utah with um, Chris Jansen and Aspen. I was there. Yeah, I was The first thing that we found was I found a gopher tortoise, and then Lon found that little horny oh, dog right dude, next to so it, the, the yeah. really pink one. I was like, okay, I found something. We found a gopher – or the desert tortoise. I don't – I. I'd like to find more stuff, but I found something. <laughs> yeah, plus we were with pros, man. They knew where everything was. I don't think yeah. we were beating them to it. We just no, went. no. Come I want to do that trip again. I want to do Utah again, pretty bad, or Utah and Arizona or something. Arizona, like that. I definitely want to get. 
Yeah. That's my next one. I really want to hit up Sedona and then I want to go to like uh southeastern Arizona because I want to see Willardi, I want to see Lepidus, and I really want to see the uh, southeastern Molossus, the blacktail rattlesnakes. They yeah. got these like really yellow ones down there, and I just am like, bro, I need to see one of those. Yeah, we, we <laughs> gotta get back there. Yes, yes. Hell yeah. But yeah, when you find something, when you go on your on a trip and you find something right away, it does really release that pressure because there's been a couple times where I go out, you know, I travel an hour, two hours to go herping, and I just Nothing. get skunked the first day, and I'm like, <laughs> "Damn, this sucks." You mean yeah. like that time we all went to Florida, Rob? Stop it, <laughs> <laughs> bro. When, when we went to me and Kristen went to the coast, uh, North Carolina. Um, uh, a couple a month and a half ago, two months ago, and it was pretty chilly, but it was still like warm. And you, we were seeing like lizards and stuff during the day. But I was like, man, I really want to see a snake. And we went uh, road cruising for like an hour and a half, almost two hours, like right around sunset, and we did not see a damn thing, man. And then like as we were leaving town, we're like, we're just gonna do like a quick little run through this dirt road in this park and just see if we see anything. And the sun was setting, and we're like, oh man, I guess we're not gonna find anything. We're just gonna turn around. And so we go to this road, we stop, we pull over, and I'm like looking in the little waterway. And then all of a sudden, I see this uh, chain king, its tail going down into the ground. And I was like, no, no. And I'm like, <laughs> run over and I grab it and I'm holding on to it. And it's like underneath a layer of roots. And I'm like, I am not letting go of this thing until it comes out. <laughs> but like, uh, it was literally right before we left. And I was like, I'm so glad we didn't get completely skunked. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Bro, I was I was just like cuz we it's it's still fun to hang out and everything, but when you're not finding anything, it's like it's just a little frustrating to be like, yeah, you know. I, in, yeah. in Utah, I didn't find anything. So I was I was like I was still having a great time, but I wanted to find something. Then and then if everybody scally finds the healers and I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, Freaking scally has got to ruin not it. Does he, not only does he get to find something, he found the healers. Like that's the, the, yeah, that's the coolest. The, that's the coolest <laughs> thing to find. So, so of course when he yells it, we don't believe him. You know what I, I did mean? not believe yeah, him. Yeah, right. I didn't yeah. believe him. Yeah. Dude, I remember talking to Scally after that trip and he was like, I found the healers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, he, sh he should be. I would be happy, you know? He yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he yelled that, I was like, he, I didn't even turn around because I was like, shut up, dude. Like, stop that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, no, really, healers. And I was like, oh, come on, man. I mean, yeah. yes, healers. That was the other, like, the, still the first day we were finally getting to that property and it's raining uh, in Australia mm -hmm. where it's raining. And, you know, Rob's right. It's the left side of the road drive and we all took turns. That is so much harder than you think it would be if, if you don't think it's hard. It's mm -hmm. ridiculously hard. It's so, <laughs> it's so crazy. But anyway, we're driving. It's, it's really raining too. And, you know, we're just about to be there. We're all exhausted. Rob just, you know, slams on the brakes and we're like, oh, he thinks he saw something, you know. And I get out. I'm in the front seat. So I'm running down. And I'm like, screw it, man. We're here. I'm awake now. Let's you know? do it. Yeah. And yeah. And boom. That's a carpet python. We found it first, you know, first night he's, you know, oh, they're all yeah. still in the car. Rob, Rob runs it up and I'm running behind. Like, you guys want to see a carpet python? You know, yeah. <laughs> losing our mind about it. So it was, it was just crazy. Hell, Hell. yeah. Yes, that oh, is just so fucking awesome. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. I know it's this is not the NPR show, but I, uh, <laughs> I really uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it because I was just so hyped that you got to go, and that's just it, it was like, it was know. awesome, and it just solidifies we we got to do Indonesia, Rob. We have to. Yes. I don't know anybody else that will definitely do it with me, and I know it's not going to happen next year or maybe the year after, but I think one of these years we can pull it together. I think that let's see, yeah. next year's twenty twenty three. I think twenty twenty five. That's, we should plan yeah, to do that. I was because... I was saying 2025, 2026 is more realistic because it's going to take planning. Yeah. With the language barrier, we have to connect with some people. Yeah, and yeah, we can make that happen, dude. dude. You should I check think we out can do it. Um, iNaturalist. It's, I do uh, all the time. Okay, I do dude. I was time. looking through all the Borneo <laughs> pictures, and I was like, I do dude, all look the at time. the variation of the Borneos from where they're found and all this different yeah. stuff. Man. Yeah, Central oh and, and near Saba and all that other stuff. Yeah, dude. I'm always. I get so excited when there's a new one. I'm like, yes. oh, fuck, I didn't see that one last time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dude, it's just so freaking cool. Cause like, I was just thinking about it for like local things. I was like, I wonder if they've got like Southeast Asia stuff on there. And I started looking at scrubs and I'm like, oh my God, this is yeah. so awesome. 
I, I get stuck in them holes where I just type in the species of where it's at, and I'm like, there, you can just put snakes when you're in Indonesia, yep. and everything pops up, and you do that, yep. and I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Yes, yeah, it's so freaking cool, man. Yeah, we definitely need to try and plan for that Indonesia trip because I've literally been talking about it forever. I need to hit Borneo, and I want to hit Indonesia just like in general. I'm down to do so many things as long as we take a few days and focus on different parts where we can definitely find some short tails. Put all the vipers and stuff there, seeing yep. three ticks, monitors, everything. So much cool. I want to see it all, but I definitely yeah. want to see Borneos in the but, wild more than more than one. You know, exactly. I, I think we could do it. I think so. And, and that's another species that's like uh, high up on my list. I, I really want to see Borneos. Bloods would be cool, but Borneos really. And then I want to see some scrubs in the wild if possible. And then Tropodolamus, I really want to see some of those vipers, man. I well, just if we could talk to Dan Maleri and follow that plan of where he went to like Raja Ampad and yeah. he saw the viper boas and chondros and scrubs. Mm -hmm. That would be that awesome. That would be yeah, because you could do a little bit there because you always that's the hard part about Indonesia. You're always taking small planes depending on where yeah. you're going. So if you're gonna do it, let's do that you know what i mean if we're yeah. going to take 10 or 12 days to get out there let's do it up you know what i mean like, let's... Uh -huh. and he, i'm sure he wouldn't mind helping out some or you know giving us the pointing us in the right direction so yeah he's always been really fr freaking nice to me and um reach out to me about a little bit about the scrub pythons and uh and stuff so i will i'll definitely i want to get on that because yeah, that cause... is like my dream trip <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah, seeing a scrub in the wild, like that's uh, like where we were at in Australia. They saw scrubs, and what we scrubs weren't a, like something we were going to be able to see. So, yeah, I was hoping, you know, we would, you know, maybe be able to see uh, a, a blackhead or anything like that. We didn't mm -hmm. find any blackheads, but you know, I can't be disappointed. We found so much, and it was so much fun. And yeah. Jeremy, if you have not been, back. if you have not been outside the u.s to herp yet you gotta do it I oh yeah go back. no it needs I, to happen Co costa rica is not a hard trip and i want to go back to costa rica real bad because costa rica I, is up, up on my list for sure i was there but it wasn't for herping but i made kind of like wildlife part of it and i saw all kinds of wildlife yes costa rica is definitely a cool place and like i said it's not too expensive it's not crazy far so yeah, yeah i want to i want to get back to costa rica and hell just, yeah I, I mean there's a lot of places but it's just hard to time and money but Okay, so, so Costa Rica 24, and then <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. got Borneo and Indonesia 2025 or 2026. Well, I want to get back to Australia because they're going to do – I don't know if – they're. I think this year they're going to try to do really? the Iron Range, which I really want to try, but I don't know if I'll be able to afford it or have the time, but 25, the, uh, the Kimberly. So the Kimberly, yep. Yeah, mm. so I, mm. one of them times I'm going to go back with, especially if Owen, Owen wants to go. That's where – you know, the reason, I mean, they want to go there too, but I will not let them go without that. So, <laughs> <laughs> heck yeah, Dude, heck yes. yeah, yeah. We got, we got to make some, some trip happen for sure. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so much fun. I mean, all the crazy stuff you see and get into and the culture shock, it's, yeah. it's just, it's fun no matter what. I mean, it really is. There was so many good times and laughs and just trying food and driving around, meeting people. We met people. <laughs> It's just, it's a, you know, it's a billion stories you can tell. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's totally worth it. I mean, I, I guess if you went 10 days and didn't find one reptile, it would kind of suck, but I, <laughs> I think it'd be really hard not to do if you're setting out to do it and you have 10 days to do it. Yeah. True. 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 <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. All right, man. So we have uh, passed our hour mark, which is totally fine because we're having a, a great time. But before we go, uh, we ask all of our guests one final question. So that question, Matt, is what in the realm of reptiles, be it something in your own collection, something you've seen online or whatever, what in the realm of reptiles has you excited about reptiles right now? Huh. That's kind of weird. I don't, I guess seeing everybody working <clears throat> with like different species and having success. And like we were saying, hopefully more, more people are getting into Borneos and stuff like that. Not that there's anything wrong with, continuing the ball pythons and the crested geckos and everything, but seeing, you know, like we just brought up, Oh, and doing the white lips and, mm -hmm. and, you know, all this other stuff and you, you having scrubs and scrubs are becoming, you know, something and people are breeding Candoya and mm -hmm. all the other, you know, colubrids are coming back hardcore. It's just cool yeah. to start seeing everybody do it. Uh, I haven't been to a reptile show in a while. Hopefully we start seeing this stuff at reptile shows. So it makes it that much cooler. You know what I mean? So it's, just that variety, you know what I mean? Bringing it like, I'm not super old school, but 
back then it was that's what a reptile show was yeah tables and tables of different <clears throat> stuff not just all pretty much the same thing and maybe that'll inspire people to come out and vend and really make a trip of it and spend money to see the you know stuff the first time i know online so easy and what everything with what happens with biosecurity and everything it is a tough time right now but you yeah. know it's not just for reptile shows but maybe that will bleed into it but i'm just very excited to see everybody working with so many different species and having success. And even if they're not, they're just excited about it. They're, they're trying, they're excited to keep it there. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah. Heck hell yeah. Man. I'm about that yeah. life. <laughs> All right. So if people <laughs> want to see uh, more of the things that you're doing or see some of the creatures that we were talking about on today's show, uh, where should people look you up on social media? Uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Facebook, it's Matt Minnetola and Philly Hair Pediculture. I got a business page. Instagram, Philly Hair Pediculture. I'm sure if you just Google it, it'll come up and I post there. So try to keep it to not my page as much. Like Philly yeah. Hair <laughs> Philly Hair Pediculture. If you just type in Philly Herp, if you don't get spelled the Herp Pediculture part, which I get, uh, you know, Google <laughs> that. I'm sure Facebook and Instagram will pop up. Yeah. Hell yeah, nice, man. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for coming on for real. I've yeah. been listening oh, thank to you for having me. It was a time. blast. This hour flew by. I'm used to yeah. two and a half, three hours. To, <laughs> and, 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 I, and it's easy to do when you start talking to people. So yeah, 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 Dude, yeah. We'll, we'll have to do a um, a postseason recap, like once things start hatching out, so we can talk some more, and uh, that way we, we can yeah. talk about some more Borneo stuff. Yes, sounds awesome. Thank you for having me, guys. Oh, this was awesome. Thank you. Hell yeah! Heck Thank you yeah. so much for coming on, man. We appreciate oh, you. Man. See you later. <laughs> yes, Take sir. Care. Boom! Heck yeah, Love man! It. Episode ninety nine in the books. Dude, I, 100 is next. Yes, dude. I love Matt. I look up to him so much. He's just like such an incredible human being. I, I'm so geeked out right now. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That was such a great time. So yeah, yeah. yes, details for episode 100 will be coming soon. Uh, yes. I, I'm waiting to confirm and lock in a few things. But what I can tell you as of right now is it will be a two hour show um so we will have a guest for an hour and then uh we're gonna have various people joining us uh for the last hour of the show and just kind of hanging out recapping the last 100 episodes um and uh it's gonna be a great time and then bam 2023 is gonna be nuts um <laughs> shout out to our full year sponsor hey we're gonna have merch coming back Rob is repping one of the new hoodies, courtesy of Kristen. Thank you very much, yes. Kristen. I um, have a I have a couple shirts available too. So if people want some, you can hit me up on hey, Instagram. They're smaller yeah. sizes, but still. <laughs> heck yeah. And then of course, shout out to our full year sponsor, Black Box Cages. Um, go check them out, blackboxcages.com. All the links are down in the description below. And that is that, guys. We will catch you on the next one. Later.